Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Winthrop. It's a wonderful day in Winthrop. The, the weather's beautiful, a little hot, but wonderful. We couldn't ask to be in a better place today. My name's Jim McKenna, town manager, and I love my job, and I love this town, and this town is a wonderful place. And you people are, why? It's all about you and, and what you're doing and what you're all about. And this is a great celebration for us. It marks a beginning um, of a wonderful transformational project for this center. And many of you know how necessary this project is. Many of you have uh, jumped in and had ideas expressed and, and voiced your concerns and voiced your opinions, but you all agree that the time is now for this center to take on a new look and be the new centering point for this community. Because it means more than that to us, it means us. It means what we're about. And we want a vital and vibrant center. And we deserve one. We deserve a new center. And that doesn't come, it doesn't come without great partnership. Great partnership and a lot of work. And a lot of work yet to be done, of course, but a lot of work brought us to this point. And many of you here have been part of that uh, work. The town council for years have, have worked hard to bring us to this point. And I will acknowledge all of the council members that we have here today, Russ Sanford, Linda Calla, Phil Von Corey, Nick Del Vento, Rich Boyajian, and I see some others out in the, the former members of the council. Larry Powers is here, Jeff Turco, you're here. I saw you, hi Jeff. Peter Gill, you're here. Ron Vecchia, from days ago and now it's on the school committee. You know, so many voices have jumped in to help us understand what we need to do and where we need to go. And that is a collective common vision. And you don't have change without having that first, that everyone shares that same common vision. And we know what that vision is gonna be now. You see it on, the, on this board over here and you know it in your hearts and you can feel it now with what we're about to talk about today. But that partnership doesn't happen without a lot of help, particularly from the governor. And we want to thank you, governor, for being here today and the vision that you have for Winthrop. We know how much you love this community, although we understand that the other day you were locked out of La Siestas because you couldn't order your guacamole or whatever it was. But we'll, we'll make it up to you. Trust us. Um, <laughs> And of course, the guy who does it all for us, uh, Speaker DeLeo. I mean, our, our, we couldn't ask for better. We really couldn't. He's been such, such an amazing force for this community, day in and day out. And this is just another example of the things that he does for each and every one of you. And then we have our Senator Bancori, our local, grown and great to carry that message and that vision to the State House, and we really appreciate your, your, your being our Senator. Thank you, Senator Bancori. And Jay Ash, our good, good friend and colleague. Jay was a mentor to me. He walked these streets before he was Secretary, and he talked to me about what we needed to do down here. So he knows how important this is for us, because he sweated down here long before any of us, and, and he understands what has to happen here, and it's his help and his guidance that has been very important to this community. A great friend of ours, Jay Ash, we really appreciate everything that you've done for us. So we're here among friends to celebrate a great event, a great opportunity. And with that, I'd like to ask first that the speaker come forward as our, uh, our speaker uh, to share a few words with us today. and. Uh, and what this uh, project means to you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Jim. And before I begin my remarks, I just want to bring more of a somber note. I just had the opportunity to spend a little time with Nancy Williams, our executive director at the Senior Center. And uh, my hope is, is that um, many of you will take the time and make the effort, if you haven't already, just to drop Nancy a little bit of a note. Uh, I know just telling how much we appreciated all of her work on behalf of our, our, our community. So thank you uh, for doing that. 
And it's so wonderful to have the uh, Governor Baker and Secretary Ash. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you in my hometown to celebrate a momentous occasion for the town of Winthrop. Whether as a representative or a resident, I take pride uh, in obviously in my hometown, I'm delighted uh, to welcome you. I have to tell you, first of all, relative to Secretary Ash, our relationship goes back a long ways. Um, actually, he was already in the State House when I was first um, uh, elected. It's hard to tell when you look at the two of us. He doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. But I can remember very well before his appointment where the governor said, uh, I'm going to tell you one thing, Mr. Speaker. I said, well, I'm watching some of the appointments you're going to make. He says, I know you're going to like one of them. Anyways, I think you're going to like most of them. He said, but one in particular. And he was right because that was Secretary Ash. And I will tell you, from the very first day I walked into the State House, because he was there, because he was a lot older than I was, um, he's been a friend and he's been a, a friend since. And were it not for his assistance, we wouldn't be here today. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. <laughs> Governor, much has been written uh, about Massachusetts being a leader in so many different uh, items throughout this country. And I would say it's because of your leadership that, that it, this is true. Whether it's been education, whether it's been how we treat our, our, our veterans, whether it's the environment, no matter what it is, this governor has been at the forefront and has captained the ship of Massachusetts. And I can't, <clears throat> I can't thank you enough. I'm not getting choked up over you, by the way. <laughs> We're very friendly, but I'm not that friendly. And I can't thank you enough, seriously, for the relationship that we have had. As a matter of fact, uh, in a couple of weeks, I think it's from this Sunday, the National Conference of State Legislators is coming to Massachusetts. And one of the items on the agenda is how we are able to get things done here in Massachusetts on a bipartisan fashion. And I can tell you that this is governor has been a major part of that, and I can't thank you enough, Governor. <laughs> Although we did have one little bump in the road during our relationship, which I would like to, to mention. Um, and I have to just get it out of my system now and say it publicly uh, because it hurt me, Governor. It hurt me greatly. I don't know if you remember this when I had an issue relative to trying to lose weight and, and whatnot. Well, the, and he knows where it's going, and it's true because it hurts him. It's true. And the Governor and I decided, as we do once in a while, just to go out and have a, a bite to eat and talk about state matters, but then. It generally will evolve into sports and a whole host of, of, of things. And I said, Governor, I said, I just want to let you know that, you know, I'm going through and trying to lose some, some weight. I said, so if this is a bad time, why don't we delay it? He said, no. He says, you know, Mr. Speaker, he says, I'm very sensitive to what you're going through. I'm not going to rub it in were his exact words. And, you know, we'll, we'll just have a, a nice quiet dinner. And I just ordered some some soup and, and, and salad. And the governor, in his own way, ordered the largest hamburger you could order <laughs> with fries. Then he got an extra order, by the way. It's a true story of onion rings, because the, the rest wouldn't fill them up. And to make matters even worse, he got a hot fudge sundae to, to, to finish it off. All right? It is true, all right? Let's not... <laughs> to my good friends in, uh, you know, much more than a colleague, and I'd have to say throughout this whole process, he was my partner to making sure that we get this done. Throughout the relatively short period of time that he has been as our state senator, he has proved himself much and beyond uh, to be doing a tremendous job, and I want to thank him for his efforts in making today's possible. Thank you, Senator Bonfro. Jim McKenna, obviously, um, you know, continues as a great partner with us. It goes to show you the importance when cities and towns and states, we, we work together uh, to, get things, to get things done. 
And Jim has been that guy who comes into the office many times with his numerous plans that it, he may have and, 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 and whatnot. I know I'm in trouble as soon as I see that happening. And I can't thank you enough for your hard work, Jim. President Sanford and the entire council and the staff of the town manager's office, thank you for all the work that you have done to make this day a reality. For years there's been for years there's been an, a long-standing desire by local and small businesses to either grow or to locate here. This was evidenced by the many people who weighed in during the grant application process. I want to thank all of, more especially, the Chamber and all of the business owners who are here today who make Winthrop such a very special and vibrant place. I believe that the $2.38 million grant for infrastructure improvements in our business district will be a game changer for our community, particularly as we seek to bolster mixed-use development here. These funds will allow us to make crucial investments that we have been speaking about for years and support the reuse of the old middle school. As a coastal community with only two roads into our town, improvements to our roads, our sidewalks, and drainage and sewer updates are especially important. Three years ago, Winthrop adopted a mixed use zoning and simultaneously developed a robust economic development plan based on this new strategy. The plan took into account our proximity to Boston, the changing demographics of Winthrop, and the goal of building transit-orientated development. And while it has garnered much excitement and early support, there have been some impediments to growth, particularly the need to expand our water pipes. With this generous grant, we'll be able to make a targeted investment that will have an immense impact on Winthrop's businesses and our overall economy. As the town manager's application noted, Winthrop has undergone significant change and shift in its population over the last 20 years. One thing that has not changed through, this, though, through all of this is the spirit of our community hard-working, committed, and civically involved. And Governor, a word that you have used with me many a time, a little scrappy little town as well. <laughs> Today's announcement, which I believe will catalyze rapid and thoughtful growth, marks both the future of Winthrop while celebrating our shared values. In closing, I sincerely want to thank the Baker of Polito administration, Mr. Secretary, for your willingness to collaborate during the grant process and your recognition of Winthrop's unique attributes has been incredible. These funds exceeded our expectations and we're extremely grateful. Thank you and thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for those remarks, Mr. Speaker. You always hit the nail on the head but more importantly, you've been the clutch ball player for this town, and we know that, how important you've been to us. You and I are both have been little league coaches, right? And we love baseball. Well, I'm here to present you with the game ball, Mr. Speaker, from the center businesses who want to say congratulations and thank you to you for everything you've done for this community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With that, I, I, I'm, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have His Excellency the Governor here to share a few words with us, Mr. Mr. Baker. Thank you, Jim. Well, first of all, let me just start by saying how pleased I am to be here, and, and I'm glad to see that the electricity is up and operating. I did, in fact, come by here uh, last Saturday night with some very good friends of ours to do something we do a lot when we can find the time on a Saturday night, which is go to La Siesta. And we showed up and it was very dark inside, but we just thought that might have been the lighting. And so we pulled on the door and then we pounded on the door and we were heartbroken to discover that La Siesta was closed. 
So we left town and we went to Angelina's over on uh, Bennington Street and had a great meal, and, but we promise we'll be back. Um, let me just say a couple things. First of all, um, this is a $2.4 million MassWorks grant here today to support, to stitch together an economic development plan for the downtown district. But there's a couple things you should all know about how you get to the end of this process. Um, it starts with the legislature creating, in conjunction with the administration, the authorization and the, the framework to make it possible for us to make these investments. And over the course of the last couple of years, uh, we've made very clear to the legislature that we view the MassWorks program, which is what this is funded out of, is one of the best and most important tools we have to help communities with downtown development, economic development, housing development, uh, even in some cases public projects that involve courthouses and schools and other kinds of projects. And that we thought we needed to not only uh, reauthorize this program, but increase the level of reauthorization because we could see the power that this program has uh, to support projects in local communities. And the legislature, led by the Speaker in the House and with the support of folks like Senator Boncori and the Senate President and others in the Senate and Senator Donahue from Lowell, moved that bill through and got it passed and gave us the enhanced authorization that we were seeking so we would be able to fund more of these kinds of programs. And over the course of the past couple of years, we've probably done $200 million plus or minus of MassWorks projects in, uh, in probably close to 100 communities in the Commonwealth. And, and I have watched how these projects, these funds, can leverage private sector dollars, local dollars, and other contributions uh, to make projects like this one today possible. But it doesn't happen if you don't have a working relationship with your folks in the legislature, led by folks like Speaker DeLeo, who get what it is we as an administration are trying to do to support local communities, to help them create positive momentum and growth in their own hometowns. And there's nobody who knows more about that than our Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, Jay Ash. I say all the time to people that we believe people are policy and that the folks we put into key roles in our administration are a statement about how we think about what we're trying to accomplish where our priorities are and what we want to get done and what our vision is. And in hiring Jay to be the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, I believe we made a big statement about the fact that we wanted to bring somebody who could walk the talk and talk the walk into the job of helping our local communities and especially in many cases our gateway cities find that path to success, create opportunities for folks in their communities and create that positive momentum that he did such a fabulous job of developing in Chelsea. And Jay, you've more than lived up to all of our expectations, which were lofty to begin with, with respect to that. Um, one other thing I want to say, and then I'll sit down, is uh, Jim McKenna talked about the great people of Winthrop. You know, my wife and I live in Swampscott. That's where we've raised our kids. Um, I think of Swampscott as a small, scrappy seaside town north of Boston, which is, I know what I, which is also how I think about Winthrop. And, and our kids grew up competing against the kids from Winthrop in just about every sport you could possibly imagine. Um, we probably won about as often as we lost uh, over the course of those years. Um, but I developed a tremendous fondness for uh, the families that I got to know sitting in the stands uh, and the kids that I got to know that hung around with my kids um, during these sporting events. But there's one story that kind of says it all with respect to how I think about Winthrop generally. Um, my mom and my dad, uh, back when my mom was alive, came, uh, came here one Friday night when Swamp Scott was playing Winthrop in football and, um, and one of my kids was playing. And I didn't even hear about this story until much later. But my parents parked a long way away from the, from the football field because there was a lot of people there that night. And, and they're older and they got completely lost and couldn't figure out where they were, where they were going. And they looked lost to hear my father tell this story later on. And a couple of high school kids, high school kids, teenagers, you know, irresponsible, disrespectful um, young people, so-called, uh, walked up to my mom and dad and said, you know, it's none of our business, but you look like you're lost. And my dad said that we were, that in fact, uh, they were lost, and which, you know, for guys to admit they're lost, you got to be really lost. 
And, uh, and those kids said, where are you trying to go? And they said, we're trying to get to the football game our son plays for Swampscott, or our grandson plays for Swampscott. And those two people walked my parents all the way down, bought their tickets, got them into the uh, arena there, whatever you want to call it, and walked them over um, to our side of the field, and, and they wandered up and, and found us. And, and that's the kind of people you raise here in Winthrop. That's the kind of kid who grows up in this town. The kid who's raised the right way understands the importance of being a good neighbor and appreciates the value of, uh, of what I would call uh, the right way to do things. And, and I'm a tremendous fan of this community. I'm a great fan of this project. I'm a very big fan of, uh, of what we can do collectively and collaboratively with our colleagues in the legislature and in local government on projects like this one. I look forward to seeing the completion of this project down the road and the economic opportunity um, and the housing and residential opportunity to bring to this community. And, uh, and I must say, Mr. Speaker, you are absolutely a product of this community. I mean that in the highest sense of the word. I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend. Thank you. For those words. Uh, next, I'd like to ask our senator, and he is our senator, Senator Boncari. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And uh, just a word um, on our town manager, Jim McKenna. You know, as everyone here knows, um, this will be his last uh, final year in the town of Winthrop. And for the past 10 years, he's had a vision uh, for this town, an economic development vision, whether it's a ferry terminal. Uh, whether it's some of the smaller things you see around town, like the revitalization of the parks downtown and next to uh, E.B. E e Newton, what you did there. And it's those little things that bring us here to a day like this. It's that type of vision um, and leadership that will sorely be missed uh, in this town that brought us to a bigger thing, where the, where the governor, the secretary, and the speaker um, can deliver something like this. Um, it's, been a, it's been a great 10 years for this town of Winthrop. Um, the next 10 years will hopefully be even greater, but it'll be thanks to uh, Jim McKenna and the good work he's done for this time. And of course, we are also with uh, uh, Council President Sanford stepping down and Councilor Del Vento, who have given even more than 10 years to this town in various capacities. Thank you also uh, to you two gentlemen for all you've done for this, for this town. And of course, to my left, uh, my, my partner in the legislature who, uh, with all his duties and responsibilities, and they're vast. I mean, when, when you're at this level of government, I know uh, the governor's going down to Nantucket after, after this today, and the speaker's gonna go to some other, you know, far reach of the Commonwealth uh, to talk about things. As, as far as, you know, the speaker goes, he always has Winthrop in mind. Uh, he always has what's best for Winthrop in mind. And what we've seen the larger projects in this town. We've seen the revitalization of Shore Drive uh, with that beach project. Uh, we've seen two new schools, brand new schools. Um, and it's thanks to leadership uh, from this gentleman who can bring people together in government. And it'd be great if the federal government could take a page out of our book and see how these two gentlemen, along with my boss, Dan Rosenberg, get it together and get things done. Now, I will say, with the Senate Business District, the speaker needed me to be there to really get this across the goal line. So I'm glad I could have a small part of, you know, a much bigger project. But really, thank you to the governor. Um, you know, the governor is, is as much as the, as the governor, he still is in the communities around our district. He's in La Siesta. Um, then I guess when that wasn't open, he went to a different part of my district than East Boston and Aiden Angeles. And, you know, he's in other parts of my district. He's a big fan of Billy C's and uh, Revere, uh, which is great. And I can tell you a couple months ago, um, I, was, I went out and uh, I didn't really want to, you know, I, I wanted a night off. So I threw a hat on, my TB12 hat. I went out to Billy C's with a couple friends and no one was bothering me. No one knew who I was. No one probably cared who I was, but no one knew who I was. And uh, I'm sitting there at the restaurant with my back to the window, and my two buddies look at me and they go, you wanted a quiet night, huh? And I go, yeah. They go, the governor's walking in here. <laughs> so the governor walks in, you know, as he does, and he gets around and everyone recognizes the governor, and the table's around me, like, oh, the governor's here, the governor's here. The governor comes in, works the whole room. He points over and says, hey, TB12, I like that hat. And I lift my head up, he goes, oh, Senator Boncori. Good to see you here tonight. He gets his food and he leaves. For the rest of the night, every table came over, said hello, 
I need a job here, I need a job there. Uh, what can you do for me, Senator? So I want to thank you for that, <laughs> Governor. But really, it's because the governor's, you know, the, the, he is in our communities. Um, he's in every part of our community, and he sees a need in the communities. And that's why projects like this happen. Um, you know, I can remember the first times the Senate Business District um, got, a, got a facelift and these bricks were laid down uh, about 30 years ago, you know, and I was five years old at that time, uh, 30 years ago, just so, just so everyone up here knows. Uh, uh, and so it's taken 30 years to take another look at this, but, you know, I can tell you it shouldn't, it can't take another 30 years. Um, as, as, the, as the town manager and the council president move on, it's up to the next generation of, um, of local leaders to make sure that things happen a little quicker. Um, and Secretary Ash is a gentleman who is, home, who is homegrown from the city of Chelsea and brought that city from this, the, the brink to become an economic engine, a leader in housing and other matters that's so important to us, biz, biz, economic development. That's why he is here, he is where he is today. And if I can have any small role in ensuring that Winthrop over the next 10 years and into the future, as a homegrown local leader, um, can have the kind of success that a city like Chelsea did under the leadership of the secretary. I'll consider it a success. But to that end, we need to be bold. We need to be bold in this town and have a bigger vision. You know, we're number one under the governor's leadership and the speaker's leadership in this country. Uh, Massachusetts is the number one place to live. But it still lacks in housing affordability and housing density, and we need to be part of that solution. And we can be. It's grants like this that the governor recognizes will help a community and help a community grow economically, but also in housing areas, and it's so important. So it's such a pleasure to be here today uh, for the beginning of the, of the next stages of Winthrop's development. And uh, thank you all for being here and taking part of it. Thank you, thank you, Senator, for those words and your commitment to the town. Before I ask the secretary to come up and say a few words, you know, the governor comes here with bearing gifts, you know, and uh, we're not one to uh, just take and not give back. So we understand that you like a bakery in town called Adriana's. And we went in there th yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's what we want to be known for, as f some food, right? That's a good thing. And uh, we went in there and said, what does the governor order? And of course they said, he orders everything. Well, we didn't buy everything, but we thought we'd give you something to take back to the office and enjoy. Thank you for coming, I appreciate it. And before I ask the secretary to come up, you know, rumor has it uh, that his thing is milkshakes. Well, I don't know if it survived the heat out here, uh, Secretary Ash, but we made a try at uh, having a nice milkshake for you here while you speak to us. Come on up and say a few words, will you? Jim, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this, but I'm still mad at you. You see, folks, I called Jim yesterday. I said, um, I can't decide which tie I'm going to wear. I'm not sure whether I'm going to wear my thin tie or my regular tie. And he said, I'm not going to wear either of those. So I came looking like this. I didn't realize that bow ties were optional, Jim. I would have put on a bow tie. Where is this from? Thank you, Browns. So the joke here is that I tweet out all the time about the fraps that I get around the Commonwealth and people have started to give me fraps as I show up at places. It's a really great thing, but I wish I had talked about lobster rolls and there was a Bell Island and lobster roll here, so perhaps next time. All right, I have a couple of stories to tell. First of all, I want to talk about Jim McKenna. Jim and I uh, have been uh, partners for a long time. Uh, Jim was about four or five years ago, brought me over to this very spot, took me to Hong Kong restaurant, Hong Kong Dragon, Dragon restaurant. And I went to reach for my wallet, and Jim says, no, you can pay me back some other time. So Jim, you spent $10 on lunch on me four or five years ago, and I'm returning that with $2.4 million. So we're even, we're even. Now, I'd like to take credit for the amount. The amount is actually $2.38 million. And some of you are gonna say, that's awful strange. Why is it $2.38 million? Why wouldn't it be rounded? Well, it all goes back to this guy, the speaker. You see, after the governor said that we're going to put together an economic development package, a billion dollar economic development package to encourage economic development and business growth all throughout the Commonwealth, he sent me in to see the speaker to help get the speaker's support for the bill. Now, the speaker will tell you that he was already there and he was going to support it anyway. But he said to me, Jay, tell me what's really in this bill. And I said, Mr. Speaker, we have all kinds of money that are going to help 
grow market rate and affordable housing around the Commonwealth. He said, Jay, that's nice, but tell me what really is in this bill. And I said, Mr. Speaker, we're going to be creating thousands of jobs across the Commonwealth and all kinds of sectors. And he said, Jay, tell me what's really in the bill. And then he winks at me. It was the Winthrop wink. And I said, Mr. Speaker, I assure you that there's a million dollars in the bill for Winthrop. He said, a million? And I said, Mr. Speaker, I assure you that there's two million dollars. He said, two million? At that point, I decided to go up in increments of 100,000 because I wasn't sure where this was going to go. We settled on $2.38 million. And Mr. Speaker, I'm glad to honor the commitment that we made to you and that you've made to everybody else to help uh, promote economic development in communities. So. <laughs> We're here today uh, to celebrate you. So we had an old saying in Chelsea, and the saying was, you plan the work, and then you work the plan. I want to give everybody credit for the great work that you've done here in planning the work. To the council, to Jim, to others in the audience that have been involved, we are very, very impressed with what you are planning to do here in Winthrop. I want to recognize Mark Drayson from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council who had a hand in that as well. So the governor talks all the time about supporting good local efforts and that good local efforts uh, come about through thoughtful consideration of what the possibilities are. You have done that with your planning exercise, and now we're here to tell you that we're going to work with you to work that plan. You see, downtowns are very important, vitally important to the economic health of communities and to the vitality of regions. And we're here to support you and your efforts to produce an even greater, stronger downtown. You have the semblance of it right here already. There's great restaurants, there's great places to shop, there's culture. There's residential activity taking place here. The bones, as we say in the planning efforts, the bones are here. You need to fill in a lot of what is missing. And I'll tell you that the smartest of places start with planning, and then they execute those plans. And those plans are about dense urban development that drive market rate housing, that bring shoppers to restaurants, who then support the retail activities in a community. You have the semblance of a plan that can do that. We all know how proximate we are to Boston. We can take advantage of the proximity to Boston, but you also need to create something that's special, that's unique to, to Winthrop. And your planning activity, along with now our two and $3.8 million, will help fulfill the vision that you've all had. Uh, so all of us are very happy at uh, Housing and Economic Development uh, to work with you. I have uh, a number of staff people here I want to thank, all Suffolk County uh, guys and gals. Juan Vega, who's Assistant Secretary of um, uh, Housing and Economic Development. Uh, Nate Thomas is here, uh, who's a program manager and, and manages this program. And Tanya from East Boston, who is like a neighbor to Winthrop, is here. Uh, so thank you all for your support. Uh, know that we care about um, every community, um, and we care about all it's doing. But when you have a great legislative delegation, uh, like the Speaker, like Senator Boncori, uh, who, by the way, I'm before on Tuesday in a hearing, um, so I'm, I'm only saying this because I really respect you, not because I'm before you in a hearing on Tuesday. Um, you have a great legislative delegation that are, uh, are making things happening, not only locally, but are working with us uh, to make sure that these types of things can happen uh, throughout the state. So congratulations all for everything you've done to get us here. And all of us are looking forward to all the benefits that this will produce. So congratulations. Thank you, well, thank you Secretary. Well, I like that. I like the looks of that, folks. We actually got a check. Isn't that something? Huh? Thank you, Governor, really. From on behalf of everyone in our community, thank you and all, and Speaker and Senator and, and Secretary. This is, this is quite a day. With that, I'd like to just have uh, Russ Sanford, our Council President, come up and, and share his thoughts on behalf of the Council. Good introduction with the, thank you, Chief. Appreciate that with the sirens when I stood up. <laughs> but we do have a little history here, and, and Jay Ash happens to be a, a Chelsea guy, born and bred, as well as Linda Calla. And uh, we kind of grew up in the city, and I can remember when I first came to Winthrop, uh, I had a, a friend who had a summer place down at the point. And the first time I had to ever come there was for a barbecue, and I looked down the, the whole beach, and I, and I said, wow, this is just like Cape Cod. And I fell in love with Winthrop as a Chelsea boy way back when. 
brought my family here, my wife, and we, and we uh, raised them here, and we love where we're at. A lot of folks out there uh, never believed that this day would come. I want to say again, welcome here on a beautiful summer day, and thank you, Governor Baker, Speaker of the House, Senator Boncori, and Jay Ash for all you've done to help us. Uh, and especially thanks to the town manager. You know, I've had the opportunity to work with the town manager uh, since he's uh, been here about 10 years, was it? Almost 10 years. And he's been a tremendous asset to the town. He's been very cooperative. It's almost the speaker and the governor working together and, you know, with differences, executives, so on and so forth. But he's been a great resource for the town, had a big vision, sometimes beyond the vision that we sometimes had. So it was exciting to have him here. I'm going to miss him. I look forward to staying uh, close to him as a friend going forward. Uh, I want to welcome you to today, which I'm going to call the beginning of the Winthrop Renaissance. It starts here in the center, and with the help of everybody who is here today, this renaissance will continue throughout the town. With much hard work from all of the committees involved for the master plan, rezoning, and with all its divisions, we've arrived at a place today. It's the beginning of a renaissance. The word renaissance means a revival or a reinterest in a place or thing. I want to thank everybody who's worked so hard, Chamber Partners, Paul Levy, the President of the Chamber, as well as our elected officials for all you've done, and for the committees who've worked hard to get us to where we are. Today's the beginning of the Winthrop Renaissance. Thank you for coming. Well, thanks everyone for coming. I know we haven't thanked everybody, but boy, I share in, in the delight that we all share today. And thank you, and, and let's get this project going. You hear that, Steve? We're going. Thanks a lot.